what's happening in the world coming up on NTD News. First, our top stories. A temperature rise of 1.5 degrees is posing no existential threat to humanity. That's what the UN's new climate change chief says. We bring you his latest take on global warming. The Biden administration is banning incandescent light bulbs. Soon, LED bulbs will be among the only kinds you can legally buy. A new case may be looming in Georgia for former President Trump. A local district attorney hints at what it could lead to. The IRS wants states' cooperation with a new test. The agency is looking to start its free direct tax filing pilot program. Welcome to NTD News Today. I'm Chris Beers. Our top news, the UN's new climate change chief says we're not actually facing an existential threat if global temperatures rise by 1.5 degrees. He says exaggerating the real situation is counterproductive. Here are the details. Professor Jim Ski is the newly elected head of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. The panel monitors and assesses the science related to climate change. Ski says climate change activists consistently warning of a so-called doomsday in the near future are harming efforts to tackle the current situation. Ski told the German news agency DPA, if you constantly communicate the message that we are all doomed to extinction, then that paralyzes people and prevents them from taking the necessary steps to get a grip on climate change. The professor has over 40 years experience in climate science. Under the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement, hundreds of nations agreed to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius. Ski recently told German outlet Der Spiegel that the world won't end if it warms by more than 1.5 degrees. He did add, however, that the world will become a more dangerous place, and that it can't be denied that man-made climate change is here. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres took a different tone at a Thursday announcement. The era of global warming has ended, the era era of global boiling has arrived. The air is unbreathable, the heat is unbearable, and the level of fossil fuel profits and climate inaction is unacceptable. He said it's still possible to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius and avoid what he calls the very worst of climate change, but he says only with dramatic, immediate climate action. The Biden administration is banning popular kinds of light bulbs. Starting today, manufacturers and retailers that sell incandescent and halogen light bulbs will face federal fines. The administration is instead pushing LED bulbs. The Energy Department says other kinds of bulbs waste too much energy. The federal agency says the bulb switch will save consumers around $3 billion per year on energy bills and cut carbon emissions. But the Residential Energy Consumption Survey says fewer than half of households reported using mostly or exclusively LED bulbs. More higher income households use LEDs compared to those of lower income. The Energy Department has reversed a Trump era rule protecting incandescent bulbs and consumers' choice of lighting options. Consumer groups have also said the perceived climate benefits and, quote, speculative assumption driven and prone to bias in the hands of agencies with a regulatory agenda. Leaked reports indicate the Fulton County District Attorney could be assembling a racketeering case against former President Trump and multiple supporters. The investigation has focused on actions that Trump and Republican allies allegedly took to pressure Georgia officials to block Joe Biden from being declared the election winner. Within the past few days, Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis dropped additional clues to a Georgia TV station. Willis told WXIA she's holding true to her commitment to give the American people an answer by September 1st. She also said she was increasing security around the courthouse, anticipating that some people may not be happy with the decisions she's making. Willis's office began investigating Trump two and a half years ago, sparked largely by a recorded phone call between Trump and the Georgia Secretary of State. Trump said in a Truth Social post that Willis is racist and has been waiting for the perfect time to take action during his presidential campaign. President Biden spoke casually with his son's business partners. That's according to Hunter Biden's associate, Devin Archer, who gave testimony in a closed-door hearing in the House. I spoke with Epoch Times reporter Jackson Richmond to learn more. 
Jackson Richmond, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Chris. Greatly appreciate it. Jackson, what were some of the main takeaways of Devin Archer's testimony? The main takeaways of Devin Archer's testimony included, one, that Archer uh, witnessed Hunter Biden over the 10-year uh, relationship that they had in business, being on the phone or in person with uh, Hunter's associates 20 times. And another is that the Biden brand, that's how he put it, the Biden brand really um, put a stamp on Hunter's business dealings, that the now president of the United States, by just being on the phone, even if, as Hartshire claimed, it was you know, to exchange pleasantries with uh, Hunter's business associates, such as talk about the weather, really kind of gave that stamp of approval to the business dealings that Hunter Biden was doing. And um, another was that the Ukrainian energy company Burisma would not have survived were it not for that Biden brand. And we're hearing in these 20 phone calls that then Vice President Joe Biden didn't actually talk business with Hunter and his business partners. Why are these phone calls significant? The phone calls are significant because they raise a conflict, or should I say conflicts of interest for the now President of the United States. As you know, the President of the United States deals with foreign policy ranging from China, you know, an, an adversary, even though the Biden administration considers China a mere competitor, to our allies like France. And again, Hunter has done business with uh, French and Chinese companies. And what has been the response of both Republicans and Democrats to this testimony that we heard, or that was closed doors? The response of the Republicans was along the lines of this being a bombshell. While the Democrats said that it was, you know, a nothing burger. Um, You know, Congressman Dan Goldman told reporters not once but twice in, in you know, um, two press stakeouts that this was just a a nothing burger. Um, And it was just it's a mere fishing expedition by the House Republicans. While uh, Congressman Andy Biggs said that while Archer you know, said that um, President Biden didn't discuss Hunter's business dealings. Just merely being on the phone gave that, say, stamp of approval to what Hunter was doing. And that the Biden brand, as he put it, was absolutely invaluable to Hunter Biden's business dealings. Well, Epoch Times reporter Jackson Richmond, thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Greatly appreciate it. After the break, New York City Democrat lawmakers write a letter to President Biden. They want him to declare a federal emergency over the city's immigration influx. And Florida could become the first state to adopt an alternative test for public university entrance. More in just a moment here on NTD News Today. Hey, I told you enough of that. But look, this is different. It's gone King World. is sometimes all it takes to change the course of history. With courage and great effort, our ancestors built the pillars we stand on today, leaving us a legacy of art, music, and wisdom. At the heart of almost every culture is our relation and connection with the divine. Today, their profound contemplations, beliefs, and great sacrifices have at times become misunderstood and even ridiculed. With the help of academic experts, we'll shine a new light on some of the most influential and courageous characters in history. 
and the miracles that surround them. A painting that has true beauty. I imagine it's like a door. The artist holds the key to open the door and bring people to a pure world. A world where people are more compassionate. I am Li Ching Yun, the founder of Kwai Shan Fang. In Taiwan, we have the world's largest cypress forest. My father especially loves the forest scent emitted by the cypress forest. To bring the forest's fragrance to my father and family, I founded Kwai Shan Fang. We aim to provide you with the most natural cypress forest essence. Welcome back. 54 elected officials in New York City have sent a letter to President Biden. They're asking him to address the influx of illegal immigrants in the city. The officials want him to declare a federal state of emergency since the spring of 2022 buses of illegal immigrants have arrived regularly. They're bused into the city from Texas after crossing the border. According to the mayor's office, the illegal immigrant influx could nearly double the number of people in the already overtaxed shelter system and cost a billion dollars a year. A federal state of emergency would allow federal agencies to work with and fund the housing and services for the illegal immigrants. The 54 Democrat lawmakers also requested that the Biden administration allow the illegal immigrants to work in the country. The letter makes no reference to curbing the number of immigrants entering the city or the country nor does it differentiate between legal and illegal immigrants. As a sanctuary city, New York is one of several across the country now that have declared it will not cooperate with federal authorities to arrest and deport illegal immigrants. Labor exploitation of underage immigrants is up. The Labor Department says there's been a 44% increase since the same time last year. Some of these miners are working dangerous jobs. The U.S. Hispanic Business Council's founder and CEO, Javier Palomares, gave us the latest. Javier Palomares, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. Good morning to you. Javier, tell us about the severity of this issue of companies exploiting migrant children. Well, you know, the Labor Department um, has found thousands of violations of the Fair Labor Standards Act. Uh, in fact, they do, they've identified over 4,400 uh, children uh, working illegally in a variety of industries. That's a 44% increase when compared to last year. Uh, and they have levied over six and a half million dollars in, in penalties. That's an 87% increase over last year. Uh, and the situation is getting worse, not better. Uh, just last month, a 16-year-old child died on the job, and that marks the third teenager to die while working here in the United States. Now, tell us about your own personal experience as a teen farmer and just the conditions that these young migrant uh, employees will face. Well, uh, as you as you know, uh, Chris, you know me. I I, I was a, a migrant farm worker as a child. You know these are difficult conditions. That they're deplorable, frankly. Uh, they were back in the day. Uh, they and while things have gotten a bit better, uh, it is unimaginably difficult work. It is sun up to sundown. It's physical labor. You're out in the elements all day long. You're out in the heat. You're out in the cold all day long. Um, 
in my personal uh, circumstance, uh, you know, our our home uh, was a 14 by 24 uh, foot structure uh, with no internal walls. We didn't have indoor plumbing. We didn't have electricity. Um, you know, and myself and my mother and nine siblings uh, lived there. It was uh, very difficult. Um, and while again, conditions have gotten better, uh, it, it is unimaginable to the average American what these immigrant laborers have to do. And and what about the companies involved here? You know, what can the business community do to, yeah, put pressure or just ensure this kind of thing doesn't get out of control? Well, you know, at the United States Hispanic Business Council, uh, we sympathize with those uh, businesses and those industries that are suffering from labor shortages. But undeniably, child labor is wrong. It, it is undeniably evil. Uh, and at the USHBC, we believe in, in commerce, but we believe in commerce with a conscience. Uh, listen, we, we are America. We can do better. Uh, and so we need to work together to figure out uh, better ways to provide the needed labor for certain sectors uh, while protecting human rights and, uh, and the lives of these children. And tell us about the legislation on the table to deal with this issue. You know, I'm delighted uh, that you asked. There, there is a piece of legislation called the Dignity Act. It is being put forth by um, a Republican uh, representative, uh, Elvira Salazar, from Florida and a Democrat representative uh, from the state of Texas named Veronica Escobar. These two women have reached across the aisle uh, and have put together what is referred to as a Dignity Act. It would allow people to legally enter the country to become working uh, individuals that contribute to the American economy and solve this labor shortage that we've seen for more than a decade uh, in the agricultural sector alone. Javier Palomares, founder and CEO of the U.S. Hispanic Business Council, thank you. Thanks for having me, Chris. Have a good day. The IRS is acting, asking states to test drive a new electronic tax return system. If it goes well, the tax agency may press ahead with a more permanent program. The IRS in May announced plans to carry out a limited e-filing program called Direct File in 2024. The agency told Congress that most taxpayers are interested in such a program and that the IRS is technically capable of delivering it. Their data is also showed that taxpayers would be more interested in the program if it included support for filing state tax returns. But experts say that a number of issues need to be resolved before that could happen including ensuring security of taxpayer data. U.S. job openings fell to the lowest level in more than two years last month. That's according to the latest labor turnover data by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The figure dropped over 30,000 to some 9.6 million on the last day of June, marking the lowest since April 2021. Postings grew in sectors like health care and state and local government but fell in education, transportation, warehousing, utilities, and the federal government. The drop is in line with tight labor market conditions, despite hefty interest rate increases from the Fed to dampen demand. America's forgotten generation is retiring, but do you know who it is? Baby boomers and millennials get a lot of attention in the press, but you don't often hear about Generation X. Here to discuss is NTD Business's Don Ma, Don, I guess that's why they call Generation X the forgotten generation. Yeah, well, Chris, a new uh, the latest survey from the National Institute for Retirement Security uh, pointed out that Generation X, so we're talking about ages 41 to 56, um, they're not ready for retirement, according to this survey, this, this report. You know, some of them only have a few thousand dollars saved up for retirement, and you know, they're, they're not young right now. Yeah, and we're hearing that they have, on average, about $40,000 in retirement savings saved up. That's not much. Yeah, and, and some of them have zero dollars saved up. Some of them have one dollar saved up. You know, it, it, it's, it's looking you know, grim for, for some of these people. And I'm also hearing that they're the first generation to be born after the nation switched from 
the pension plan type retirement system to the 401k retirement system? Yeah, so we have to point out that this group of people is significant uh, to uh, relation to the population of, of the U.S. We're talking about uh, nearly 64 million people, uh, around 20 percent of the entire population in the U.S. Um, so it, it it's it's really important to you know think about retirement when you're younger rather than older. And earlier I spoke to a financial advisor, Lawrence Sprung, to to get some professional tips. Uh, he's from Midland Financial. Maybe we can take a look at that interview. Uh, so the latest report from the National Institute on Retirement Security is uh, it shows that Gen X is facing a dismal retirement outlook. I found that um, the bottom half of earners have only a few thousand dollars saved for retirement. Uh, so we're talking about people between 41 and 56. So my question to you is, uh, let's just take the middle number here. Uh, if you're 48 years old, is it too late to start saving aggressively for retirement? So Don, I'm I'm right in this Gen X uh, phase here, and I'm exactly that number. I'm 48, so you know it, it's a challenge, right? The the benefit is starting early. So the earlier you get started, the better. But I think the bottom line is for those that might find themselves behind the eight ball, so to speak, uh, it is time for them to figure out their way and figure out a way to start putting more towards their retirement, because I think what we're seeing now is really a result of many of the changes that have taken place over the last couple of decades, as far as the shift from defined you know, benefit plans to now defined contribution plans where we're going to be responsible for our own retirement. So if, if you're not there yet and you're not above the median and you're well below, it, it's time to really get started in a big way. Okay, so here's another question. Whatever your salary is now, is it realistic to assume that you only need half of it when you retire? Uh, you, you know, that means whatever your living standard is now, you're going to have to reduce that by half. What do you think? I, I don't know that that's a realistic expectation. Many a times the families that we're working with, uh, we look at things on the other side of the equation because the salary, you know, the income in a household, it may be a single, it may be a joint. More importantly, you want to look at the expenses. What are the expenses looking like for the family? And many times we're seeing instances where uh, the need is closer to 80% of what their current expenses are, are going to continue into retirement. And in some areas of the country where living expenses may be higher, it's closer to 90 to 100 percent. A lot of folks who are in the higher living expenses area where, you know, it's a higher cost of living, they may not see a significant drop off in retirement, assuming they keep their situation status quo. So we typically look at that 80 percent number at a minimum. I think 50 percent you're shooting on the low side. How many percent should you be putting aside from your salary uh, for retirement as, as a rule of thumb? as much as you can. So, I mean, you know, that really, that it comes down to as much as you possibly can. Obviously, when you're younger, you have the ability to potentially put in less because you have the time value of money working on your side and having that grow through compound interest. I think that the number that you're looking at, and we, we talk to folks all the time about that 10% magic number. If you could save 10% of your earnings every year, uh, especially as a young person, that should put you in a pretty good position over the long haul. Now, depending on how much you have saved at this point and how old you are, you may need to look to you know increase that number in that percentage because if you're sitting around and you're 48, 49, you know, 50 years old and you are below that median and you're at the lower end, you know, and your expenses are relatively high, you may have to put in significantly more than that 10% number to get you back on track. All right, thank you so much Lawrence today for your insight. Thanks Don, appreciate it. A new study ranked the best and worst states to retire, and some of the results may surprise you. Bankrate looked at five categories across all 50 states, affordability, overall well-being, the cost and quality of health care, weather, and crime. Last year, Florida ranked number one, but the state that came out on top for 2023, Iowa. The Hawkeye State was named best place to retire due to its lower cost of living, affordability but high quality health care, and low crime. 
Other states that round out the top five places to retire are Delaware, West Virginia, Missouri, and Mississippi. Florida dropped to eighth. Experts say older Americans shouldn't rule out places that aren't traditionally top of mind for retirement. As for the worst states for retiring, the bottom five are all in the Northeast and West, primarily because of the cost of living. Massachusetts, Washington State, California, New York, and Alaska. Regal Cinemas has emerged from bankruptcy. Its parent company, Cineworld, says it has cut $4.5 billion of debt. The world's second largest theater chain says it raised $800 million in new equity capital and secured financing for $1.7 billion. Cineworld filed for bankruptcy protection last September. M many movie theater struggles struggled during the pandemic and for a while after. Blockbuster hits this summer like Barbie and Oppenheimer are helping to turn things around, but there's still uncertainty amid the Hollywood actors and writers' strike. Bed Bath & Beyond is back from the dead. That's a month after Overstock.com bought the houseware brand out of bankruptcy. Overstock's website relaunched today as BedBathAndBeyond.com. The move merges Overstock's online business model and merchandise categories with popular branded products favored by Bed Bath & Beyond shoppers. Overstock CEO Jonathan Johnson said all of his company's categories will transition over and new products will also come in. According to Johnson, they have already added more than 600,000 new products to the site. Fast food giant Taco Bell is facing a lawsuit. A New York man brought the case to federal court yesterday, accusing it of false advertising. The class action suit seeks to include other Taco Bell consumers who were disappointed in their meals. The lawsuit claims that Taco Bell's advertisements do not look like the menu items served. For example, the man says the Mexican pizza he purchased did not appear to have a similar amount of beef and bean filling. Taco Bell has not responded to the accusations. Coming up, the nation's first religious charter school is scheduled to open its doors next year. First, it has to survive a lawsuit that aims to block its opening. And as cases of missing Native Americans hit the thousands, a New Mexico defect detective is working to stop the crisis. We'll have more on the implications of her efforts when we return. NTD's Capital Report. It's about getting answers. Cutting through the fog of politics. It's about your questions and our chances to ask. What is the net impact of the American Carson Graves? Thank you for joining us. We're speaking to those in power to find out what does this mean for the people. We're here so you are in the know. I'm Evelyn Lee. And I'm Kevin Hogan. The stories that need to be told, the voices that need to be heard, the truth you need to see. Get unbiased and in-depth news. Don't miss a beat. I'm Stephanie Cox at NTD. We're here for you. Welcome back. A jury in Pittsburgh is deliberating the synagogue shooting case. They will decide whether to hand down the death penalty to the shooter. The judge gave the, the, pa the panel brief instructions this morning before they began deliberations. Robert Bauer's attorneys have urged jurors to spare his life, urging he arguing he suffers from mental illness. The jury already convicted him of murdering 11 worshipers and wounding six others in 2018. It also has determined he's eligible for the death penalty, but not whether he should receive that sentence. Florida could become the first state to accept a classical alternative to the SAT and ACT college admissions tests. The new test is called the CLT, the Classical Learning Test. The Florida Bo Board of Governors is expected to vote on whether or not to use the test this month. 
It could make Florida the first state to accept CLT test results in its public universities. The CLT was created in 2015 as an alternative admission test. It emphasizes the humanities, morality, and classical literature. It is accepted by over 200 private universities. Some conservatives see it as a solution to tests that emphasize progressive views. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis this year signed a bill allowing the CLT to be used as criteria in the state's Bright Futures College Scholarship Program. And Public School New College of Florida also announced earlier this year it would accept CLT test results. The College Board, the organization that determines the SAT, has criticized the new test over its methods and rigor. The nation's first religious charter school is scheduled to open its doors next year. That will be in June in Oklahoma City, but first, it has to survive a lawsuit. St. Isadora is a a Catholic charter school, received approval from the state charter board, but the ACLU and other groups are seeking to block its operation. That's over concerns the president will open the door for more publicly funded schools of this type. They also argue that non-Catholics, students with disabilities, and others could face discrimination there. Recent legal trends show religion gaining footholds in more schools. Many states have increased funding for voucher programs. Texas now allows clergy to replace counselors in public schools. The Supreme Court has also ruled vouchers can be used at religious schools. A Native American detective is on a quest. Thousands of Native people have gone missing, but most cases remain unresolved due to a jurisdictional maze and lack of resources. They came to you for help, and how do I help you? And I don't care if you you've been, you were doing drugs and you left your kids. Yes, that is wrong, um, but that's not the point right now. The point is, is I need to go find you and bring you back home. Detective Kathleen Lucero knows members of her Native American community well. The New Mexico village of Isla Tapueblo is home to more than 3,000 indigenous people. As the village's chief criminal investigator, Lucero's made missing persons her priority. She's fighting to stop her people from becoming part of an epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous women and relatives in the United States. It breaks my heart. It, it gets to me, it gets to the bottom of my stomach. It, it's really heartbreaking to know that something is happening in their family and how do we help them police officials and policymakers told reuters a jurisdictional maze and lack of resources have contributed to an estimated 4200 indigenous cases remaining unresolved the head of the bureau of indian affairs acknowledged his department's lack of resources but said it was trying to create better coordination between other agencies Some native police, like Lucero, are taking matters into their own hands. Since 2015, Lucero has handled eight missing people cases, with seven people found alive and one still missing. What if it was me? What if it was me? And and for me as an investigator, again, that sensibility that I'm a mother, um, I'm an aunt, I'm a sister, um, and a family member, a cousin, and just because that person on the other side is not a direct connect to me, they're still somehow connected to me and how do I help them? How much confidence do you have in the U.S. military? Gallup asked Americans that question in June and shared the results yesterday. Pollsters found that around 40% of U.S. adults have very little or some confidence in the armed forces. That's the lowest it's been since 1997. The biggest drop in support was seen in those identifying as Republican, followed by independent voters. Democrats' confidence also dropped this year after a rise when Biden took office. Despite the decline, the military remains one of the most trusted institutions in the country, second only to small businesses. Meanwhile, the Army, Navy, and Air Force have all struggled recently to meet their recruiting goals. After the break, Burma's former leaders have cleared in five criminal cases, but she's still facing over two decades in detention. And heavy rains stretched into a fourth day in Beijing. We have an update on the devastating aftermath of Typhoon de Soir.
Stay tuned to get two rolls of Alien Tape free. You wouldn't stick your mother-in-law on the wall, but you could. With Alien Tape, it just sticks. Just peel and stick to make anything stay in place quick. Brick, pavers, marble, tile, plastic, even leather. Nothing works better than Alien Tape. You wouldn't stick your fishbowl on a moving car, but you could with Alien Tape. The secret is nano stick technology that grabs and locks on to secure one side of the surface to the other. Alien Tape secures in seconds, then twist, pull, and rinse to reuse. Call or go online to get your first roll of Alien Tape for just $19.99, plus shipping and processing. But to make this deal really stick, we'll give you two more rolls absolutely free. You get three rolls of Alien Tape for one low price. Order now. To order, call 1-800-490-1364 or go to tryalientape.com. So call 1-800-490-1364 or order online at tryalientape.com. I had a pretty normal mom life. Everything was pretty good and it was a very happy life. And we just had a new baby. And then all of a sudden, within a day or two, she's on life support and fighting for her life. And I knew something was pretty wrong. A little less than a week after I came home, I couldn't breathe. That's when we decided to go to the hospital. I was given the diagnosis that I had peripartum cardiomyopathy, which is basically a pregnancy-induced heart failure. They told me my only chance was a heart transplant. And the American Heart Association helped make that possible. Their research helped save me. This could not happen without monthly donations from friends like you. Your sustained support helps fund life-saving research that leads to medical breakthroughs, like those that gave Jen a second chance at life. Heart disease is the number one killer in America, and we urgently need your help to save lives. Go to helpheart.org or call now to become a monthly donor today. Your donation of only $19 a month, just 63 cents a day, will make a difference through prevention, early detection, treatments, and cures that help save lives. I am very thankful for the American Heart Association. I am grateful for just every day that I get with my children. Please go to helpheart.org or call now with your donation of just $19 a month. Join our community of monthly donors and you'll get this limited edition t-shirt you could wear to show you're helping save lives. One simple act today can save your life or the life of a loved one. So please, Call or go to helpheart.org now to help save lives. Welcome back. Some news from around the globe. A jailed Burmese leader has been pardoned partially. This takes six years off the total sentence for the former leader of Burma, also known as Myanmar. Here's more. Myanmar's former leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, has received a partial pardon from the country's ruling military junta. According to state media reports, five of her 19 convictions have been overturned, reducing her 33-year prison sentence by six years. The 78-year-old denies all charges against her and has been appealing against them. These range from incitement and election fraud to corruption. One diplomatic source described the pardons as a cosmetic move, but a junta spokesperson said it was part of a countrywide amnesty involving freeing more than 7,000 prisoners. The Nobel laureate has been in detention since she was ousted in a coup in early 2021. Just last week, Su Chi was moved from prison to house arrest. The military junta also partially pardoned former President Win Mint, who was arrested at the same time. Both Su Chi and Win Mint are to remain under house arrest, according to an informed source. Beijing continues to grapple with the worst flooding seen in a decade. This as the aftermath of Typhoon Daksuri continues to ravage the city and surrounding areas. We have some shocking footage. For the fourth consecutive day, the remnants of Super Typhoon Dusuari ripped through China's capital. Raging floods engulfed large swaths of Montogu, the hardest hit area in western Beijing, leaving around 150,000 homes without water. Videos on social media showed a sea of flooding near the city's fifth ring road, with bridges down and cars washed away. The 
Another video captured brownish floodwaters gushing down the main streets and pouring into residential areas. Courier centers also suffered severe damage, with packages scattered and drifting about. The death toll from the storm has climbed to 11. According to state media, another 27 people are still missing. More than 50,000 residents were evacuated. As of Tuesday, nearly 400 flights were cancelled and hundreds delayed at Beijing's two major airports. Torrential rains also pummeled neighboring Tianjin and Hebei province. In one video, water rose to the height of a road sign submerging nearby trees. Typhoon Doksuri made landfall in southeastern China last Friday before moving north. Authorities said an average of seven inches of rain was recorded in southeastern Beijing from Saturday night through Monday afternoon. That's equivalent to the average rainfall for the entire month of July. Downpours are expected to weaken starting Tuesday. But China is bracing for Typhoon Kanun, the third typhoon to hit the country in a matter of weeks. It's expected to enter the East China Sea on Wednesday. An update on the tragic situation in the Beijing area. The death toll today has now climbed to 20 confirmed casualties. A real bear or a human in costume? The authenticity of a bear in a Chinese zoo has sparked a heated debate on social media. The video posted last Friday showed a sun bear standing on its legs inside an enclosure as visitors looked on. It was at a zoo in eastern China. People online questioned if the bear was a man dressed in a costume due to its human-like stance and folds of loose skin on its back. Zoo officials have reassured visitors that the bears are not staff in disguise. Sun bears are the world's smallest bear species. They have thinner limbs than other bears since they are from a tropical climate and are occasionally spotted standing upright. Australian federal police have charged a former child care worker with over 1,600 child abuse offense, offenses against 91 children, 87 of them in Australia. Authorities say the alleged abuse took place at various child care centers in Brisbane and Sydney over a 15-year period. AFP Assistant Commissioner of Cyber Command Justin Go outlined the details of the case to the media today. We allege the 45-year-old man from the Gold Coast recorded all his alleged offending on his phone and cameras. The AFP is highly confident that all 87 Australian children who were recorded in the alleged child abuse material have been identified. The 45-year-old man has been in custody in Queensland State since August 22nd, August 2022. Police arrested and charged him initially for making child exploitation material. The case has been scheduled in court on August 21st. A major drug haul in Chile, police seized more than $10 million worth of illicit substances, all hidden in white goods. The bust was part of a two-month operation in a port city. According to officials, police seized over 400 pounds of ecstasy pills in seven appliances, as well as other drugs, a handgun, and vehicles. The drugs had reportedly come from Holland. Eight residences were raided as part of the bust. Five Colombian citizens were taken into custody. Still to come, severely obese American teens turn to surgery and new weight loss drugs. Are these safe and effective? And how would you like a backpack fitted with air conditioning? An exhibition in Tokyo explores new ways of staying cool. We'll bring you the highlights here on NTD News. What if you could whiten your teeth by simply brushing your teeth? Now you can with Smile Actives, the teeth whitening breakthrough that safely gets your teeth white and keeps them white every day just by brushing your teeth. I never thought that whitening my teeth could be so easy. I just put the gel on the brush, the toothpaste on it, brush, and I can see my white teeth. Simply add Smile Actives to any toothpaste and our patented PolyClean technology activates into a powerful microfoam that penetrates into the enamel surface to safely lift and remove stains. You need a simple way to whiten your teeth. 
without strips, without trays, without going to the dentist. And it was about time that a product was developed that you would be able to do that with just brushing. And now, Smile Actives is even better with new Pro Whitening Gel with 33% greater whitening power, clinically shown to whiten teeth faster, up to eight shades. 100% of users saw whiter teeth on food stains, coffee and wine stains, even on veneers, crowns, and dentures. I eat the blueberries, I drink the coffee, and I know that Smile Actives will keep my teeth white every day. If you could use something so easy like Smile Actives to take yellow teeth to white teeth, why wouldn't you? Why spend hundreds of dollars for whitening treatments at the dentist when now you can whiten your teeth with new Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel every time you brush your teeth? Call or go to SmileActives.com and for a limited time, get new Pro Whitening Gel for just $24.95. Order in the next five minutes and buy one, get one absolutely free for just $24.95. That's two for one and save 58%. We'll even include free shipping. Get your teeth whiter guaranteed or return it within 60 days for your money back. I smile every day now. <laughs> The difference is literally night and day. So now I'm always smiling, always cheesing, because now my teeth are much whiter. This offer is not available in stores, so call or click now before the special buy one, get one free offer goes away. Anyone who's ever sold a home will tell you it's really hard. And it's one of the biggest financial decisions you'll ever make. That's why who you work with matters. Together with Homelight, we take care of every detail. Taiwan's endangered stout camphor trees are worth conserving. Alps Biotech is committed to nationwide restoration to maintain eco-balance. To help counter global warming, we're keen to act on carbon reduction and attain zero emissions. We're realizing ESG sustainability while building up carbon credits. Restoring stout camphor trees, promoting global sustainability. Alps Biotech. Back to the news. Severely obese American teens are turning to surgery and new weight loss drugs. Teens and their parents say these aggressive measures are necessary, but others urge caution. And today's Andrew Thomas has more. When John Simon III turned 14, his weight had soared to 430 pounds. His obesity has become a life-threatening medical condition. My compassion with food was exhausting. You know, I loved food at that time, you know. That's the only thing that was kind of a comfort zone for me. John underwent weight loss surgery that removed a portion of his stomach. Now, eight months later, John has lost more than 150 pounds. Supporters of weight loss surgery or drugs for children say that they are safe and effective. Some medical critics urge caution at intervening so early. John turned 15 in May. He works out at his local gym twice a week and walks 18,000 steps daily. One day, he hopes to become an auto engineer. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. What would you do in your 90s? A British fencer says you're never too old to get active or even learn a new sport. She's passing on her love for fencing. At 90 years old, Joy Fleetham is believed to be the oldest fencer in Britain. She came from a small seaside town in the northeast of England and took up fencing at the age of 67. She said she can still beat teenagers today, even if they're nearly 80 years younger. And her life revolves around this unlikely hobby. I just love it. My whole life is revolves around my fencing. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm a living example. There is life after 70, 80, or even 90. Fleetham is now president of the Bridlington Blades Fencing Club. She encourages others to join the sport and is happy to pass on her wisdom to the young. Tech entrepreneurs in Japan are finding new ways to stay cool. Companies are showcasing their latest gadgets at an exhibition in Tokyo. NTD's Andrew Thomas has more on the products meant to beat the heat. Some might call it cool couture. This dress comes with built-in fans. The piece is part of the Extreme Heat Countermeasures exhibition in Tokyo. 
The gathering is meant to address Japan's typically sweltering summers. In Japan, the summers get really hot, so our target audience is people who work outdoors and those who work inside factories. Basically, people who work in environments where there's not a lot of air circulation. Tokyo is scorching at the moment. This month, the city has recorded at least eight days over 95 degrees, a record temp for July. Extreme heat can lead to illness, and in extreme cases, death. We know there are many cases of heat stroke in people who work in factories, and sometimes we hear these can be fatal. So we want, and I don't mean just through this exhibition, but as the industry as a whole, to focus on developing products that will prevent the risk of heat stroke. Cooling sprays and AC outfitted backpacks are just a couple of the items on display. The event's organizers expect increased demand for this kind of tech. On the whole, I think people are looking at a variety of products on display here. But I think people are especially interested in personal goods, like ventilated backpacks, or for people who wear shirts like me, there's lots of interest in cool undershirts. Simple goods that people can use straight away are increasingly becoming popular. For new parents, this product could make carrying the baby a bit more comfortable. The snuggly comes with integrated fans to keep the little one cool. Parents get a reprieve from the heat as well. The part where there's contact gets so sweaty, but with this, the baby feels cool and stops sweating and his body temperature goes down. And me too, I feel cooler. This week, Japan issued heat stroke alerts for several regions. Drones are delivering mail in Scotland. The airborne delivery service has kicked off an, on a northern island chain, marking a first in the UK. Royal Mail is using the drones to deliver letters and even packages between a number of islands on the Orkney archipelago. The service is starting off initially as a three-month trial, but could be continued permanently. It's expected that the new delivery system will drastically improve the Royal Mail service on the islands, though it can still be hampered by adverse weather. The sea salt industry is in full swing in western France. Farmers are raking in, raking in the white gold that is viewed as a premium cooking ingredient in the world's culinary circles. Sea salt from this salt flat is revered by many chefs as one of the best of its kind. It's harvested by letting seawater evaporate in individual mud cells, which are then raked. Salt has been farmed by the same method in this area since medieval times. Each individual cell can yield over one ton of salt in an average season. The most expensive form of salt is the so-called flour that crystallizes at the surface of the water. It retail, 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 retails at up to $10 a pound and is exported to more than 60 countries around the world. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Chris Beers. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.